Henchard's house was one of the best. Faced with a dull red and grey old brick, the front door was open and as in other houses, she could see through the passage to the end of the garden nearly a quarter of a mile off. She's got a big old garden, hasn't it? Massive garden. And all the store yards are at the back of the house, right? We're we're standing in... Well, we're standing at uh, at the uh, delivery ramp for Waitrose. (laughs) Yes. So instead of hay... Delivering Waitrose goods. Delivering Waitrose goods to the back of... Uh, and we're standing at sort of a, a hayloft, right? That is very definitely an old, an old hayloft. hayloft. Yeah, out um, the back of the Barclays. There's a whole bunch of people walking past us. A lot of them, well, some of them walking. More of them in mobility scooters. So we're out the back of the Barclays right in the, the Waitrose we're Between the back park. of the Barclays and the delivery ramp of Waitrose. Yeah. So we're between most, po- most podcasts, Tim, yeah. would take to the front of Henchard's house. They would. Because it's obvious it's got a blue plaque on it. But no, we bring out the back, because this is where his gardens and storeyards would have been. This is where all his wealth was. And she says it's a quarter of a mile away, so it's a huge area. Yeah. And actually now it's the Waitrose car park. And which is quite huge, isn't it? It's and very, it is, yeah. is contained within a kind of wall. Within a it? very fine wall. Yeah. And so there is a little bit of the last remaining of a sort of uh, agricultural store building is the, out, right the back of, the out the back of the Barclays. So this would be a, um, it's very good. a corn merchant's... Premises. We'll be stuffed full of corn and uh, hay, absolutely masses of it. Now you you made the excellent point. Well, you make the point again about the blue plaque being wrong. Well, there we are, listener. If you if you were tuned into a traditional podcast, which gave you a walking tour around the front of buildings rather than really getting down to the nitty gritty <laughs> at the back, you would find an information board and a blue plaque saying this is the site of Michael Henchard's house. Blah yes. blah blah. Right. But what they but think about it. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. If you've if you've read the book you'll know that actually for the vast proportion of the book, yeah. certainly in the timeline, it's not his house. He loses his house. He goes bankrupt. It's Farfrae's house. It's Farfrae's house. So this is the site of Farfrae's house. The Scotchman. I would say, for the bulk of the book. Yeah. And that's what it should say on the blue plaque, to my mind, if they were being curiously specific. And uh, to, to, to finish that thought... Who oh. is the mayor of Casterbridge? Well, there you are, you see. By the who is e- the t- titular hero of the novel? By the end of the book, right? Yeah. By the end of the book, who's, who's being nominated for mayor yeah. by the other burghers of the town? Yeah. It's Farfrae. It's Farfrae. So, in fact, the book is about the Farfrae becoming the mayor of Casterbridge. It's not, so about, it's, it's not about Henchard at it's all. It's a go-getting, entrepreneurial, yeah. make-good book. It's, yeah. like a, it's one of those self-help books that businessmen write. Yeah. How to get ahead. In, yeah. uh, in corn trading. So you turn this book on its head, mate. I told you this is a bit like The Great Escape, where everybody thinks it's about Steve McQueen, but actually that film was about James Garner. Well, it was supposed to be. 